thank you very much sir for giving me this opportunity and our dear participants thank you very much for your endurance and our long awaited session has, is going to start within few minutes and before that i'm going to introduce our resource person and my name is venkatramana manipatrani an assistant professor of english at lendi institute of engineering and technology on behalf of the department of english bidding you all good evening once again and i would cordially welcome you to this exciting evening session and now i am very happy to introduce our today's honorable young and dynamic resource person dr challa krishnavir abhishek he is a faculty and course in charge department of journalism and mass communication andhra university he is also a soft skill trainer andhra university and he organized more than 100 training programs and he completed his uh, dphil in linguistics and pursued his masters in english journalism philosophy linguistics psychology and computer science variety is the spice of life this best suits his profile he he authored 45 books and published 72 articles so far we qualified uh, the ts ap said uh, for lectureship in english and he did a course on sustainable engineering from blekinge tekniska hogskola sweden one of the top most universities in uh, sweden ranked 23 in the country he directed and acted in various message oriented short films and also has a music album to his credit now he is going to talk about emotional language learning a study of photography thank you very much sir and we cordially welcome you to the session as a resource person and we request you to begin the session now thank you very much sir thank you so much sir thank you for the wonderful introduction Uh, Welcome. I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, it's a, and uh, so I'm extremely sorry for the delay. I had to attend an urgent meet, and uh, and I'm extremely sorry. I have to apologize. So, so I'm, I'm actually in a car. So please excuse me. So I'm Dr. Challa Krishnamurthy Rabishek, and uh, uh, my focus is actually photography. Uh, how you know we can use photography in uh, teaching or learning. So basically, being an English language teacher. so we use photography because uh, it helps in identification it helps in objectification it helps in uh, i'm next yes so basically photography is a medium that opens up a world of experiences beyond mere technological knowledge it has potential to enable people to grow understand themselves and others and support the development of new ways of seeing to understanding connections with culture and society the process of seeing is different for each individual as it is influenced by the photographer's or viewer's own knowledge background and cultural experiences thus the process of seeing is the individual's interpretation of the community or the vision from this community learn how to construct and control the meaning of photographs how to communicate their ideas and concerns to the choice of subject in ways of capturing it students learn about photography as a visual language understanding visual symbols and codes that create meaning in their images the ability to construct meaning in images and decode them is referred to as being visually literate furthermore A visual literacy has to do with critical knowledge that includes awareness of the intentionally or intentionality of how an image is constructed in order to offer a particular response or experience. In that sense, critical knowledge refers to the context in which photographers photographs are produced and seen, whether the photographer is making a statement or is challenging preconceptions, and whether ethical, social, and political issues are raised through the process. the four axes characterized as action reflection communication and negotiation are central to this process and prevalent in photographic learning action refers to approaching the subject and the taking of the photograph the moment of deciding what is inside and what is outside of the frame which position to take the photograph from and how the light should be applied to add to the meaning of the image once processed and printed this photograph becomes an afterthought on a certain event of concern 
which on reflection provokes thoughts. So basically it has to provoke thought and forms connections between the actual event and the photograph of it, raising issues of representation and communication. Communication takes place at more than one level. Firstly, it concerns the message that is communicated to the image. And secondly, the debate initiated when the image is presented in its intended context. During discussion, new interpretations and thought processes develop due to the different experiences that each student brings. So this is where the process of negotiations begin, which is called the ability to cultivate creative aptitudes. Example, tolerance for ambiguity and Photography is an ideal for encouraging and to challenge established way of seeing. The versatility of the medium invites the creator to explore possibilities, expand the boundaries created by traditions and the visual language of the field, and to transform perceptions of both the creator and the spectator. So basically, the, the, the FTP that is focused on photography, media, and communication, the main object of this FTP is this, is to create an experience, is to create an experience to the teachers, to the students, and to everybody who are consuming the photograph. So basically what I have done is, so because for you, we know that photograph speaks a thousand, more than a thousand words, and a photograph has a capability of, you know, of conveying so much, so many emotions. Uh, so we, what we have done is we, I have, uh, uh, with my personal interest, I have uh, authored a book on visual poetry. So visual poetry, it has uh, photographs and poetry on the side of it. So I have, uh, see, my, means my friend has clicked photograph and what I've done is seeing the scenic beauty of the photograph, I've developed a poetry on each photograph and you can actually see them in the slides. So if you can uh, see the PowerPoint presentation, you will you'll be able to uh, see, uh, see that. Uh, so I, 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 I PowerPoint presentation, if it's feasible. Oh, it's not uh, it's not visible sir it's not visible uh, uh, yeah it's not visible i guess it's not visible to me yeah you you wanted you wanted it to is, have it's, it's visible because share. so that uh, uh, if if if, uh, if it's not visible to me is it visible to everybody if it's visible to everybody i think it's fine no it's not visible sir you it's want visible yeah it's not visible yeah if it's if it's if it's fine if it's if it's visible i would like you to open it so Can that, we... uh, that is can you share the screen option, sir? Can you access the share screen option and then share it? Uh, uh, just a second. You, you don't have my PowerPoint? Shall I, shall I WhatsApp you if it's, if it's fine? That's better. Maybe Paul, yeah, sir? Yeah, you can do it, sir. Yeah, can yeah, you? You can uh, WhatsApp it, sir. Yes, WhatsApp too. So, yes. Uh, yes. I have WhatsApp again. Yes. To whom so, did you? So to, to the to the to both the numbers actually. All right, no problem. Yeah. So basically, uh, I think we have a lot of experts who are ex uh, who are, who know photography, you know, who are into this field from past many years, from many decades actually. So, but but here I wanted to focus more on the journalism aspect of it, that is uh, photo journalism. So when we talk about journalism, as I've already told you, photo a photograph speaks a thousand words, and the caption is enough to convey the meaning of the photograph. But sometimes we also need to write a news item uh, based on the photograph. And when we write the news item, we have to see to it that the five W's and one H are covered. What, where, when, why, who, and how. So these aspects have to be covered in order to explain the photograph in detail, in order to explain the contents of the photograph in detail, in order to be able, uh, because when we talk about news, the photograph has to be explained and some of photographs are self-explanatory and uh, when we talk about this, uh, photographs of sceneries so i don't uh, a caption is more than enough in explaining that and sometimes a caption is not required so it depends so in uh, journalism we follow inverse pyramid method where all the important aspects of the news are covered in the first paragraph and other uh, aspects are covered later on 
the explanation parts and all. So basically, so is the, is the PowerPoint presentation ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's, so, it's up. So my, my, my presentation is educational photography. So how we can use uh, photograph uh, in teaching language, especially or teaching physics or chemistry or biology or any other subject, because as we know that, you know, photograph plays a major role in explaining in visualization and photographic augmentation is the future. Uh, so uh, please go on to the next slide. Yes, so basically this is how, you know, we use photographs or pictures uh, in order to teach English language. So here is an example of pictorial adjectives, comparative and superlative. So for example, you see the bigger, the smaller. So for example, the green box is smaller than the red box. So you can see the green box, you can see the blue box, or the, you can see the red box. And also Mount Snowden, it's 1,085 uh, meters. You have Mount Fuji that is 3,776 meters. So Mount Fuji is higher than Mount Snowden. So this is how, you know, using pictures, you can easily communicate uh, adjectives, pictures, you know, through pictures, you can teach adjectives, especially the English language teachers can use this. Please go on to the next slide. So this is one example of adjectives. So this is another example where you can see um, John's car costs 15,000 euros and Jane's car costs 25,000 euros. So Jane's car is more expensive than John's car. So this is comparison. So these are pictorial adjectives, which, uh, can, which are useful in explaining the comparisons. Next slide, please. So pictorial adverbs. So for example, you have a picture of cheetah. Cheetah runs fast. Or hedgehogs walk slowly. Or snails crawl very slowly. So slowly, fast, and these are actually your adverbs. And when you have, for example, hedgehogs, or for example, you talk about snails, or you talk about any other animal, for example, uh, if you don't have the picture of the animal, in our, uh, it, it, it again depends on the textbook. If the textbook is more uh, student friendly, what you know, it helps in explaining India understanding and easy comprehension. So that's the advantage. So next slide. Next, next slide. We can move on to the next slide. Now understand prepositions. For example, the ball is in the box. Uh, previous slide, please. Uh, so we are talking about pictorial uh, understanding prepositions through clip art. So you, you have a box, you have a uh, cube, you have a cube where the ball is in the box. So that is the representation for the ball is in the box. The ball is on the box. That's the representation for the ball is on the box. John's house is next to Jane's house. So uh, this is the representation. So basically beside, on, into, above. So all these prepositions, you know, if you if you express them pictorially, it will be easy for the students to understand. It will be easy for the students to comprehend actually what each preposition because uh, the students are confused, you know, where to use in, where to use at. So if you use pictorial representation for this purpose, it will be easy for the students to understand. Next slide, please. Especially prepositions because prepositions are a little hard to decipher for the students and even teachers make mistake in using in and at at particular places. So pictorial vocabulary. So, you know, for example, uh, different art gallery, what is an art gallery, what is a bank, what is a bus station, what is a church, what is a cinema, what is a fire station, what is a garage, what is a hospital, what is a hotel. So using pictures, you know, pictures actually they help in easy comprehension. So that's the main reason why we use, we have to use pictures in teaching language, not only to uh, young kids, but also to adolescents and also to young adults, because they actually help in completely understanding the parts of speech and where to use them. Please, next slide, please. So what we used to do is we used to take uh, students, uh, we used to take them to the uh, local shopping mall, we used to take, take them to uh, different places you know, wherein, you know, they can actually feel the object, 
they can actually visualize they can actually see the object and they can uh, name the object in english because the main, the main problem with the students is they are unable to name through all the fruits in english maybe all the vegetables in english or different objects in english so it's very difficult for them to name everything in english so for that you know i believe that the the class has uh, should not be restricted to the four walls and it, we have to take the students to the grocery store at extra and uh, make them you know speak make them call out the names of the fruits or the vegetables or the different items they go to the store to purchase so pictorial vocabulary nationalities so you have the flags of different nations uh, and you know you can easily identify the nations using the flags or for example if you want to identify india uh, a picture a picture of you know taj mahal would do good or if you want to identify telangana uh, a, pic a picture of uh, char minar would do good or if you want to uh, identify vizag a picture of the submarine with the beach i think it would do good you know a picture it it actually it can talk about the location it can it can talk about the person it can talk about the idea it can talk about the nation so a picture speaks everything so it it can speak a lot of things and whenever you know we want to identify something we identify through the picture through a certain uh, situation in the picture or the to a certain characteristic in the picture or through a certain idea in the picture uh, next slide please so pictorial vocabulary season so you have winter you have spring you have summer you have autumn so especially in india we don't know the difference between uh, winter we don't know the we don't know what fall is what autumn is what spring is because in in, in india we don't have all those seasons but unfortunately we have partial spring we have partial fall we have partial autumn so especially if you go to jammu kashmir or himachal pradesh you can actually feel autumn you can feel fall you can feel spring etc so through pictures you know you can easily convey you can help students understand what actually spring is because we in vizag especially or we in south india we don't express we don't experience spring we don't experience fall we don't experience autumn so that's an advantage of using pictures in the classroom next slide please next slide please yes so you can you can also uh, identify random pages from different textbooks you know so for example uh, you have a, 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 a picture of a popular struggle in nepal and bolivia and also you have a picture of uh, racism so you can actually you know using pictures you using drawings you can convey a lot of ideas so i believe that you know uh, the matter the the textual matter it has to be you know as concise as precise as possible and it has to easy, it has to explain it has the picture has to be self explanatory and at the same time even the textual matter that is that supplements the picture has to be adequate next slide please so a uh, next slide okay this is i think this is also self explanatory this what it talks, it talks about economic growth and income distribution gains so how it changed and all so yes please next slide so emotional language teaching model so this is the teaching model that i would like to propose to the language teachers you know wherein because this model is interactive it is stress free it is it is very friendly student friendly and it promotes acquisition so what is the difference between acquisition and learning acquisition is something if you if you, if you, if you acquire something you you will remember it forever but if you learn something you'll forget it immediately so language acquisition is very important for the students to retain the vocabulary to retain the phrases to retain the idioms etc so similarly a stress free environment is important for the acquisition process to take place so if a stress free environment is not created if if the classroom is stress filled so then uh, it, it's not conducive to acquisition so similarly Uh, there has to be an emotional and a cultural connect with the language because we know that english most of the english literature that we read if the english teachers we generally use english literature to teach english language so the main problem here is the cultural differences you know the cultural nuances they play a major role because we talk about american literature we talk about british literature so the students are unable to you know culturally or emotionally connect with it so if you use more pictures in the literature like we had during our school days maybe for example if you remember oliver twist you know it, it was completely pictorial you know if you remember huckleberry finn it was completely pictorial if you remember the famous five if you remember the secret seven if you remember the 
uh, Hardy Brothers. So everything, all these novels or Nancy Drew, all these were pictorial and they were self-explanatory and it was easy to comprehend or understand. The different feelings because these cultural differences, you know, they can be easily, you know, balanced out when you have a picture beside. So similarly, so what I did was I developed this emotional language teaching model, which actually one aspect of it completely focuses on visual media. So it focuses on newspapers, it focuses on pictures, it focuses on film, it focuses on television, it focuses on radio, and it also focuses. I also focused on computer-assisted language learning. So I believe that you know, uh, for example, in newspapers you have you know short uh, stories using pictures. You know, most of it most of it are covered only using pictures. So I believe that you know pictures, you know, they speak a lot, and I believe that the writing part has to be reduced, it has to be condensed. So that's what we are trying to adopt. So we have recently, you know, uh, worked on a project on social and emotional learning, where we know we contain the, uh, the textual matter part of it, and we increase the number of pictures. We have actually hired a photographer, we hired an illustrator to give, to give more photographs, to keep more pictures, so that, you know, it is student friendly. And so that you know, student can easily understand and acquire the language and not just reading it you know, because I believe that you know too much of textual information it leads to a uh, uh, very surfacial understanding or surfacial learning so I don't want to promote marginal learning I wanted to promote active learning so if the learning has to be active I believe that it has to uh, appeal to all the senses all our all our five senses so if if something appeals to all our five senses I believe that you know it, uh, we have we have succeeded in uh, teaching or the acquisition actually happens if it appeals to all the senses. So this is a model of, this is the emotional language teaching model. So you can see emotional connect which is important. All the senses acquisition and having education you're having entertainment. So what it was English language I just went on this. So my language class starts with Edmus where I play the students using a jurisdiction then meditate upon a big or animation. Uh, taken out so they're ready or prepared for the I, what I do is I incorporate either lyrics or uh, either uh, television or either film or either a picture so that you know and we do with W classes so I do listening activity using a picture I do listening activity using uh, a film, I do listening activity using a short video, I do speaking activity using a picture, I do speaking activity using a film. Similarly, I do writing, act, I use, I, I make students do writing activity and reading activity too. So I also ask students, you know, to frame captions to the, uh, uh, I give them photographs, I give them pictures and I ask them to frame uh, captions so that, you know, they can, I'll, I'll get an idea of, you know, of their understanding of, uh, you know, of the language, of the phrases, of the idioms, and all of, of their understanding of the photograph. And each student has their own understanding. And I believe that, you know, you can easily initiate a discussion. I believe that English language teachers, we are facilitators. You know, we can easily initiate discussion. So the main purpose of a photograph is to initiate a discussion among the students on different aspects and different aspects of the photograph, both on the photographer, on the photograph itself, on the content of the photograph, so on, on different aspects. So this, and also uh, the computer assisted, the computer aspect of it. So basically now, you know, the illustrations are also incorporate, we are also incorporating illustrations, we are all incorporating apart from the photographs, so that, you know, it, it makes it more easy because sometimes, you know, photograph uh, through taking, taking a picture, you know, we cannot uh, completely uh, get all the information that we want by just uh, uh, taking a picture. So that was the main reason why we all used uh, illustrations. So the motion language. So basically I was talking about news so news, what is news? You know, something which you get from north, 
east, west, and south, right? That is news. News is something which is new. News, news is something which you get from different directions. So photograph any news, for example, you take uh, the television, you take newspaper, it is incomplete without a photograph. And especially in newspaper, if it is only textual, I believe that it is very boring. So 50% uh, of a newspaper is completely photographed. And without the photographers, and any newspaper is complete, incomplete actually. So even in uh, television, you know, it's not just about the speaker presenting about the content. It is all, it's also about the photographs. It's also about the visuals, right? So every, all these aspects play a major role, right? And the photographs actually they 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 make it they make it more interactive. They make it more interesting. So when we talk about communication, when you talk when you talk about media communication, so what is communication basically? So communication is basically exchange of information, exchange of ideas, exchange of feelings, etc. So you have uh, two different types of communication. So two different classifications of communication, actually. So one classification is, according to the first classification, it is based on, you know, how you communicate. So based on how you communicate, you have two aspects of communication that is verbal and nonverbal. In verbal communication, you have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And in nonverbal communication, you have body language, kinesics, eye contact, facial expressions, gestures, postures, and you have proxemics, you have time management, you have paralanguage, you have syllables, you have stress, you have intonation, etc. So there you have haptics, you have touch, and you, you have appearance, you have grooming. And in verbal communication, you have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. You have oral and written communication you have a formal and informal communication aspect in verbal and non-verbal. So this is the first classification. According to the second classification, it's based on the number of participants in the communication. So for example, uh, if there is only one person, so it will be intrapersonal communication. So how can communication take place uh, if it is only one person, right? So communication can take place through reflection, through decision making. So, you know, before making a decision, we weigh the pros and cons, we think a lot. So, encoding process, all this, you know, they come under the intrapersonal communication aspect of it. And then you have interpersonal aspect where, you know, you have two people interacting. So, you can, you can have a one on one interview, which is interpersonal, or you have, you have a counseling session, which is interpersonal communication. And then you have group communication, which is, you know, your board meetings and also your group discussion. You have public communication where, you know, uh, you, you have public speeches. And finally, you have mass communication. So in mass communication, you have print and electronic media. So print media encompasses of uh, your magazines, your newspapers, your pamphlets, your brochures, etc. And electronic media, it encompasses television, radio, and new media that is internet. So uh, using all these aspects, so it's always important that we use these aspects in our language teaching, in our in language learning process, so that you know, because I believe that you know, most of the students they have learned their English. The English language that they have acquired is through, you know, the Netflix or, you know, your uh, Amazon Prime or, you know, the films that they have, the Hollywood films that you have watched. So I believe that most of it is actually learned outside in a stress-free environment and not in the classroom. And in the classroom, you're just hone, you're just honing your uh, already acquired language skills, right? So that is what is happening. Next slide, please. So this is what I've explained. So this is how I uh, uh, schedule my class. So for example, if it is uh, the first five minutes will be preparedness, the 10 minutes will be exposure to a verse the, and drilling. I do actually drilling. That means I make them, I make the students repeat it. And then five minutes of reading activity, five minutes of listening activity and 20 minutes of structured learning that is grammar and phonetics. So basically uh, I, I actually don't use any authentic material. I don't use a textbook of using a textbook i you know i the newspaper as a newspaper as a textbook it, it actually it is more interesting because you have new content every day you have new photographs every day and a newspaper changes every day right the, the apart from the you know the, the, the title of the newspaper everything else changes every day so it's more interactive it's more interesting it's more entertaining so i believe that you know we english language teachers we can incorporate newspaper as a textbook right Yes, uh, please next slide. So basically uh, seeing a photograph, can you guess the emotion? So what is the emotion? So I've given you a certain, I've given you many options. So based on the photograph, I, if you can guess the emotion, I think it would be great. So I think it's easy, right? The emotion is silly. Okay, naughty. 
so it again it, uh, it depends on the perception your perception but uh, it's um, according to me it is a little silly or sometimes it's not also and you know the our perceptions and all change you know based on the photograph based on our uh, experience based on our entertainment based on based on our environment based on our education you now perception changes yeah it it, it might uh, sometimes refer to surprised also so uh, happy yeah it is happy sometimes you know th this is one way of showing your happiness right so so one picture speaks differently to different people right so this is something very interesting so that's why you know i believe that uh, photography are yeah, tasty yeah because uh, she just put her uh, tongue out so it might also believe uh, it might also be that it's uh, something is tasty or uh, you know or maybe you know something you know maybe they are just mocking others maybe she is just mocking someone else so there are lot of meanings in a photograph go to the next slide so it is silly or any other answer so what is can you guess the emotion for this photograph so thoughtful wonderful so i it's a good it's a good guess actually any other guess what's the meaning of the photograph what do you infer from the photograph what do you understand from the photograph anything so if you go to the next slide i you you'll have the uh, please okay yeah expectation yeah so content this content is something you know that i felt maybe expectation is something you know some someone else felt no maybe thinking is something someone else felt satisfied yes this is satisfied look no there is regretful also yes yes you can see the pain in the eyes so it depends on you know how you perceive the photograph so as i have told you the perception again depends on your environment your education and what your your experience so your perception shapes all your uh, perception is shaped by all these things yeah next slide please so i i was talking about uh, visual poetry so visual poetry what i have done is i asked my friend mr pradeep to take photographs so he is a photograph uh, enthusiast he is an enthusiast photographer enthusiast so i asked him to take certain photographs i have gave i gave him uh, five days to take photographs he has taken different photographs i have selected uh, 60 of them and what i have done is from whatever i have understood of the photograph i have written a poetry so for example based on the uh, picture you see based on the picture that my friend clicked here is the poetry that i have written so the dense forest of wild clouds tearing the sky apart i guess you can see that uh, the light has found its way so you can see you know the light has found its way tearing the dense clouds apart uh, through the to the dense forest of wild clouds has it begun its hunting so maybe the, the the sun has begun its hunting with the loaded rifle of photons you know what does the sun emit it emits photons right so you can see the photons there you can see the light there has it triggered the gun to wake up the sleepy flowers swaying in the carols of poetic night to kill the morning dews bluffing as pearls on painted leaves breaking the sky of shielded glass has the rain made the longest jump leaving back records and medals has it pierced its needle of medicine of joy happiness and dance and peacocks so here what happened was maybe there was a thunderstorm and uh, it was uh, thundering heavily it was lightning it was lightning and it was there was a lot of rain right so now you know what did the sun do it has sent it photo it, it has triggered its photons and the photons have pierced through the dense clouds you know and the light came as a blessing to us so this is what i've inferred to the photograph you know some other person might have some other uh, inference from this photograph similarly if you if you go to the next uh, photograph so we can actually give our students uh, this poetry writing activities you know where you can give in their own poems you no know? so the this is something this is one photograph my my friend clicked and here is the poem that i've written the feathers have fallen on the sky the foamy feathers have fallen on the sky the feathers of the gigantic bird of thoughts the sacred sky is visible in its blues peeping from the cotton candies glowing the sparkles of shaded light has the sun silver lined the clouds in its audacious brightness has it turned its wand of rays sketching the lines and outlines of the blue sky hiding its scars with the cotton clouds is it the paradise it is the heaven where fairies meet in flying wings the feathers of which have fallen on the sky so this is what i've inferred from the photograph so uh, my suggestion to english language teachers is or any any teachers 
of English or any any subject is, you know, you can actually give a photograph to the students. Maybe you can ask some one student to click a photograph, and you can give an activity where you know the the, the students uh, take at least twenty to thirty minutes time to write a poem on it, and you know you can have a discussion on different poems on their perception and on their understanding and on their influence of the photograph. So listening, you can actually do a listening activity. You can do a reading activity. You can do a writing activity, and finally, the most importantly, you can do a speaking activity using a photograph. Yes, next slide, please. So this is uh, this is another netting drops of dew, netting drops of dew into a shade of majestic magenta, letting the butterflies turn into chameleons of beauty, bliss of exuberant ecstasy, which the nature hides in its curtains of fog and mist. The striking colors that blossom. In the dawn of dew, making the rain, rainbow run out of colors, has its petals painted in strokes of defined shades, stealing the job of the poets to imagine and create, have these dew studded flowers stood as masterpieces in the museum of nature. So this is what I've understood, what I've inferred, what I felt to the photograph. So I believe that, you know, when we talk about feeling, so nowadays, you know, in journalism, you know, we regularly uh, read uh, in newspapers or in television, we regularly uh, or consume information of death, of murder, of many many negative things, you know. So we have been consuming this from past many years, right? So we are used to it. So when we are used to what happens is the aspect, the aspect, you know, it becomes zero and become we become rock hearted, we become stone hearted. For example, if there's a news of someone you know dying of something of corona or some other reason, you know, we become we have. Okay, this is something new, so I need not react. And we have, we have emotionally become so rock-hearted that I believe that photograph is the savior. Visual media is the savior, you know, which can invoke those emotions in us, which can invoke emotions in the readers. So invoking emotions in the readers is very, 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 very essential. In order, you know, in order to maintain that, you know, we being social animals, you know, I believe that we have to be sensitive. And the sensitive aspect, invoking the sensitive aspect in us is very, very important. And I believe that photograph, has the power to do that. So in, in my other project, that is uh, photojournalism, uh, it's, it's, it's actually poetic journalism, which I, where I also focused on photojournalism. This is a book that is all by me. So here I, you are here I focused on, you know, uh, poetry, you know, how, you know, how I can actually make news into a poem instead of, you know, uh, uh, instead of a general uh, essay or a general news item or a general prose, you know, if you can, if you can, uh, uh, write a news item, or if you can uh, write, you know, uh, something, uh, a news. If you can express it in the form of a poem, I believe that you know you can easily invoke emotions in the readers. And I believe that not only English students, even journalism students can imbibe this practice of writing poems on photographs, on news, on different news items, and in different things and different happenings and different situations. So I think you know that can actually enthuse. The readers also it can enthuse the writers also so that's an advantage of this so a large body of research indicates that visual cues help us to better retrieve and remember information the research outcomes on visual learning make complete sense when you consider that our brain is mainly an image processor not a word processor in fact the part of the brain is quite small in comparison to the part that processes visual images Words are abstract and rather difficult for the brain to retain, whereas visuals are con concrete and as such more easily remembered. To illustrate, think about your past school days of having to learn a set of new vocabulary words each week. Now, think back to the first quiz you had of your school prom date. Most probably, you had to put forth in a great effort to remember the vocabulary words. In contrast, when you were actually having this or, or your visual processor for your your brain memorized these events for your automatically and without you even realizing what it was doing so it was not the it was not the matter it, it, it was it's actually not the speaking 
part of it that you remember you are actually remember the visual part of it right so it it appeals to your brain too so there are countless studies that have confirmed the power of visual imagery in learning for instance one study asked students to remember many groups of three words each such as dog bike and street students who tried to remember the words by repeating them over and over again did poorly on recall in comparison students who made the effort to make visual associations with the three words such as imagining a dog riding a bike down the street had significantly better recall so if you imagine something visually so there are chances that you can retain them very easily without any difficulty so various types of visuals can be effective learning tools photos illustrations icons symbols sketches figures and concept maps to name only a few consider how memorable the visual graphics are in logos for example you recognize the brand by seeing the visual graphic even before reading the name of the brand right so this type of uh, uh, visual can be effective than earlier so this year starbucks simplified the logo by dropping the printer name and keeping only the graphic image as you can uh, see so i think we can safely assume that starbucks corporation must be keenly aware of uh, how our brains have automatically and effortlessly committed their graphic image to memory so powerful is visual learning that i embrace it in my teaching and writing each page in the textbooks that i have written you know i co-authored or that i have authored have individually formatted to maximize visual learning i focus more on visual learning visual aspect of it each lecture slide each lecture slide that i use in my class is presented in a way to make the most of visual learning so basically i use pictures and and less of you know textual matter i just i just use keywords and more of pictures actually i believe the right visuals can help make abstract and difficult concepts more tangible and welcoming as well as make learning more effective and long lasting this is why i scrutinize every visual i use in my writing and teaching to make it to to make sure it is paired with the content in in a clear meaningful manner so based upon research outcomes the effective use of visuals can decrease learning time improve comprehension enhance retrieval and increase retention in addition the many testimonials i hear from my students and readers were heavily in my mind as support for the benefits of learning through visuals i hear it often and still i can't hear it enough times by retrieving a visual cue presented on the pages of a book or on the slides of a lecture presentation a learner is able to accurately retrieve the content associated with the visual compared to the textual matter so the retention power is great so especially when you are using photographs or when you are using visual media so this is why you know i prefer this is why i prefer photographs this is why i prefer visual medium over textual matter i believe that textual matter has to be in a condensed form especially in the form of keywords and you know the the photographs and the visual media have to take a major role and they have to you know uh, they have to means we have to increase their efficacy in order to in order or we have to increase their efficacy in order to increase our productivity our retention our acquisition so that that's that is what i wanted to give through my presentation so unfortunately because of certain constraints i was unable to present uh, give my presentation properly because of because I'm, as you can see i am in a car so uh, we are riding to a different place for a meeting so unfortunately this is uh, this is something you know that i didn't expect so but still you know i i believe that i i made you understand what uh, i wanted to express and uh, there's there's some material that i have prepared for you guys and i'll i'll share it with uh, Uh, i'll share it with sir so sir can easily circulate it uh, to all of you it's to among all of you so that you know you can if you have any doubts i have provided my email id there i have provided my cell number there in the powerpoint presentation and i'm extremely sorry i have uh, i had to go to it fast i had to rush through my presentation because of the time constraint and because as you can see i'm in the car i'm extremely sorry thank you so much thank you for your patience so it's any a, doubts you can definitely you can ask thank you yeah yeah it's a fantastic presentation you know uh, it's like a over flooded uh, watery around uh, vishakhapatnam uh, really really awesome presentation you have made the day so 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 sweet uh, dr krishnavir you thank you, you thank you sir Uh, the, the best part that is ringing in uh, all the um, participants memory no doubt in it uh, 
has the has the uh, rain uh, come out of the sky all the way <laughs> uh, that, that that has deeply uh, you know gone into my mind what an emotional present what an emotional presentation this is uh, hope you. Uh, you, you, it is not quite unfortunate you know very fortunate we all have come up um, uh, we have waited for your presentation to happen uh, it went on very well i hope uh, Rep. Troy Ramana sir will uh, end up the session by asking uh, any questions from the participants. Ramana sir. Sure sir. First of all, I would like to thank our resource person for having emphasized the importance of photography sir. With the quite thank relevant you. examples and you have made the day sir. So thank you very thank much. You, you, I would like to invite uh, questions from the participants. Yeah, you, received, uh, you, you, you received an avalanche of compliments from the participants, sir. A very good, great inspiration to listen to you, sir. And uh, people said a very nice presentation. Thank you, organizing team. Thank you very much uh, uh, in return. With a, with, a liberty, with a liberty that I have with uh, Krishnavir, uh, I have dropped yes, this presentation already in our WhatsApp group since there are a lot of uh, requests that are coming to me. So I have taken a liberty in sharing it with. Uh, I have now taken permission from you, sir, Krishna Vida <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes. There is one hand raise. Uh, yes. Hope, uh, hope we can ask him to respond. Srinivas Babu Good evening, uh, good evening Dr. Uh, Krishna Vida sir. Your sir presentation good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Though you are in a cab, but uh, have presented the things well, uh, very well because it is a commitment. You see, a teacher, one who has commitment, uh, he is able to do all the things, uh, what I believe uh, so much. So I'm very much thankful to you because uh, uh, have given some sort of refreshment to our minds in this evening uh, through uh, Dr. Hari Babu, sir. At the same yes. time, uh, pictorial presentation, how can we use pictorial presentation in all kinds of parts of speech and in which way different kinds of teachers, various faculty members, uh, they have to make the teaching effective in terms of uh, making a pictorial presentation. It's wonderful. At the same time, especially English teachers, uh, uh, this photography is nothing but a complement to the theory approach what I can say that because uh, then only it will be completed uh, here yes. uh, what I mentioned complement means C Y M P L E M E N T complement uh, and it is a complete yes. part what I can say that yes. uh, so but one thing sir uh, uh, the, uh, you see uh, we want to listen to you for a more, for more and more time because your approach uh, is very nice and uh, present a PPT also very good already Dr. Haribabu sir shared in WhatsApp group it's wonderful I have seen that uh, so my friends also simply telephoned me and uh, they appreciated your uh, excellency and your presentation sir on behalf of them I simply extend uh, their greetings to you all and thank you very thank much you so for much. your wonderful presentation thank you for giving this opportunity this is my reflection sir there are no questions from my side because uh, your presentation is crystal clear there is no question of finding any kind of ambiguity in your presentation thank you very much yeah, thank you thank you and so also, much I thank sir. the thank team of uh, Lendi, Lendi Institute sir thank you thank, thank you, you sir. and the Lendi I'm Institute hope. Rosa Madam Vinay Kumar all these persons and uh, you see Hari Babu sir uh, and each and everybody I am very much thankful and you see you have presented nearly more than one hour, but uh, we did know how did we can uh, spend the time. That's most important thing. You have proved yourself as a good uh, faculty member in Andhra University. Andhra University is very fortunate to have a person like you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Uh, still any other uh... Any other person would like to ask questions? If not, we can wind it up. Uh, we are delayed by 23 minutes. Still, you know, it is quite fruitful. Thank you so much, Krishnavir Abhishek, sir. And we, you, we sir. request you, if at all you have some time, maybe in the reflections part tomorrow or day after tomorrow, if you have some time, you can directly come join us. And then we also can extend the discussions Thanks for, uh, in a very short you. notice, you have uh, developed a wonderful content. I know that you have a lot of ability in uh, dealing with all like these you. interesting FIRs. In the morning uh, inaugural session also, uh, Professor Ramji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, in uh, emphasizing the importance or implementation of new education policy needs yes. these kind of changes. 
and i i wish uh, krishnaveer abhishek from vishakhapatnam directly to reach to the whole global platforms in uh, making the whole world getting to know that there would be a new change that is to be accepted uh, this is quite emotional uh, what you call uh, wording that is coming from me and you have made a bold attempt and you you have come up with flood of thought and then you have still left us uh, mute uh, we, we, are, we are thinking too much now uh, how we have to take tomorrow onwards uh, new things into the classroom especially you, especially news you, you have made newspaper as the textbook itself yes yes sir uh, yes though, sir. though it is very simple to think and then you know to deliver uh, you have made it open how it is to be used in the classroom uh, i yes, hope sir. all the participants might start now um, exploring or you know contemplating uh, what is that to be taken it away as a take away from the presentation of dr krishnaveer uh, we are all blessed and god bless you sir namaste thank you so and much, sir. Thank you, and sir. and we we'll end the show uh, today with this uh, happy note thank note again by morning 9 o'clock tomorrow we are all meeting for uh, uh, the presentation of uh, professor i mean sorry uh, mr sumit batachari uh, one of the senior journalists of vishakhapatnam working for hindu uh, chief of bureau at present and he is addressing on the importance of media in communication until then uh, a very happy goodbye and then you can all have a happy uh, dinner uh, by recalling the pleasure presentation of uh, dr krishnaveer abhishek thank you krishnaveer thank you, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, hope thank you, sir. hope you drive car now safely and then <laughs> Yes, to the best. Actually, actually, my 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 friend was driving, so no, I could happily just... sit at the back and uh, give my press deliver my presentation. This is again so, another this this is again another emotional uh, bonding. You know, you you have yes, as sir. as my friend Srinivas Babu has already mentioned. You have a commitment. Uh, the yes. commit the commitment based emotional presentation. That is wonderful, sir. And uh, you, sir. we 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 give you a wonderful namaskar, and we can end up the show. and i request host to end the show thank you very thank much thank you so much sir thank you so much sir.